Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and usually on this channel we try to focus on the logical objective analysis of Signalis, focusing on trying to understand the lore via evidence and documentation and that kind of stuff. This is because, as a STEM major, this is what I specialize in, it's my bread and butter. However, sometimes, it's important to understand that Signalis is more than just logical. Emotion is a very dominant factor in understanding the game. Today I will be doing an emotional analysis of Adler and demonstrating usage of dream theory to gain greater understanding of a character. So let's first explain how dream theory works from a logical perspective. I intend on having a full video out that breaks down how interps work and why they are important, but essentially consider the following. If we state that an event occurred, then the result of that event is the product of that original event. As of such, if we state that that original event is not real, then the thing that it allowed to occur could never have occurred either. Essentially, if A causes B causes C, and B isn't real, then C is also not real. Different interps handle this relationship in different ways, but for dream theory, essentially understand that because of the confusion of reality, it assumed that all data points are not real, and that everything is occurring in a dream, rather than drawing red lines and making arbitrary decisions as to what should be considered real and what shouldn't be real. This makes empirical evidence not the highest standard, and instead there is more focus placed on emotional analysis. Also, this is a totally valid methodology. If you state that everything is false and analyze the game from a perspective of everything is false, then it's valid within the understanding that everything is false. I hope that makes sense. Essentially, if you state right out of the bat that everything is false, and then you analyze it based off that perspective, then any analysis based off everything is false is valid within a situation where everything is false. Again, maybe I'm not explaining that too well. But there are benefits of this methodology, and today I'll demonstrate a very emotional-centric analysis of Adler, and how we can use it to help us gain deeper insight into his character, and hopefully show off kind of the benefits of this methodology. So let's start with his most iconic line. We can use the dream theory emotional perspective to analyze the line, I wear no mask. This line can be anal analyzed not just as a clear indicator of how lost Adler's sanity is, as we see him wearing a mask of bone as he says this, but rather as an emotion he is expressing. He is no longer the faux pas replica that's been placed into a role by Aeon. Rather, now he is free to do as he wants, as the society he served has degraded beyond controlling him any further. He is now in a state of being himself, true self, nowhere hiding behind the fake mask of being Adler the replica, but rather is now truly himself and is just Adler, taking the mask to be indicative of this assumption of his true self. This idea can be elaborated by exploring other emotional aspects of Adler's character. A key part of Adler's is worship for higher powers, specifically, and most dominantly, Falk. To him, she is akin to a god he worships. However, if we read her diaries and her perspective, she never even bothers to mention him. He's a worshipper of a god that doesn't even know he exists. This ideology is what paralyzes him to be cast to his room and diaries in the earlier cycles. This belief that he's just a follower or an underling to something worth so much more than him. Even after finding the flesh before and below, he insists on trying to continue to support her even as she slumbers. But it's finally upon facing her that he rejects this worship. He realizes that his god is flawed, seeing that she's changed and something has changed her. It's telling that he corrupts immediately after this observation, but the last bit of conditioning by Aeon has eroded away, as even his personal god has succumbed to the corruption. Beyond just the worship, there's another idea that captivized the characterization of Adler, and that is that Adler is a tool for higher powers, first for Falk, then for the Flasher King. It is often said that Adler loves Falk, which could be true. However, his love for Falk is very different than that of the main duo or even other couples we see in the game. Adler's worship of Falk is because she finds use of him. By ordering him, she gives him purpose, and we can clearly see in the diaries that when he is devoid of orders of command and not being used as a tool, he quickly becomes lost, unable to act on his own. Adler confuses being useful for someone and being controlled by them as a symbol of love. This idea, Adler does not seem to reject or even recognize as an issue, as even to his end, he acted according to the plans and ide ideas of higher powers. And that depends on Interp, but the ideals really of a fallen god, either Falk, the Cycle, or uh, Hashtir. 
Could it also be argued that his inability to truly free himself from all of those who used him is what causes his demise? But perhaps from Adler's perspective, there would be no life without being of use. I think the final analysis of Adler can come from examining his character in a way that is really popular to do. Often it is said Adler is become a result of a sane man in an insane world. And I'm going to say right now I firmly reject this notion. Adler is a lost man in a world that is too becoming lost. The ideas I mentioned prior can really reaffirm this. He follows a leader who doesn't care for him, he finds himself unable to be independent, and he only really finds his true self after both reality and his sanity have decayed beyond relief. How could we possibly articulate this as a sane man that isn't a sane man? Adler is a pure result of the Aeon State, a loyal soldier to the cause that he was created to uphold, yet in being so, he is as broken as the ideals of the state that he serves. I think another indication of this can be found in other accounts of him. Adler is a man without many friends or allies. Every other note that demarks him is suspicious and rude, blaming him for his failures. No one expresses terror for where he is, or care that he has attempted to do something to help the facility. In the end, Adler was alone and lost even before reality began their decay. And when time too lost its way, it's honestly no surprise that he began to descend deeper. Now there was a reason at the start of this video I mentioned dream theory and how it works. Because using it we can add an additional level of mania to analyzing Adler. Now I'd like to preface that I don't actually believe that Adler is the dreamer of the game. I think that would be batshit insane. However, the way dream theory works is that if all evidence is rendered null, then in theory any evidence can be considered as long as it makes some logical sense, so anyone can be the dreamer. This isn't meant to be conclusive, but rather that having Adler take up the role of the dreamer can be used as an attribute to gain more knowledge of his personality. Let me first explain this concept through using the dream theory that other characters are connotational representations of ideals. Essentially, this asserts that other characters in the game are just projection of ideals of the character who is dreaming. So for example, Ellie could be seen as indicative of the self that Adler wishes to be. Elster pushes forward and progresses. She's independent and self-driven. She has a lover who she'd die for and a lover who loves her back. These are all things that Adler would really kill for, and that's why he does kill Ellie so many times. He's jealous of what he wishes to be, and it's only by sheer perseverance of the dream that her refusal to die really pushes back against him. This connection can be expanded to her ultimately killing him and him ultimately dying from her. Their murder of each other in the final moments of the game is a symbolic representation of Adler's present fighting his future. He wishes to push forward and destroy the society that has engaged him, but he can't, and he rebels against Elster, preventing her from moving forward, where ultimately the dream ends. Another example is Sieben, who could be indicative of Adler's feelings of wanting for orders that will never arrive. Or the Yule, who is Adler's desire to not be alone. Calibri, who is Adler's feelings of being excluded from everyone else. I could go on, but honestly, I think the concept is silly. I really don't think Adler is the dreamer, and I think it served its point of articulating how this idea can be used. So with that, we can conclude this video. Dream theory is an idea that can be used to get deeper analysis of characters and focus on those characters, rather than the complex, intricate details of realist and KIY theories that try to explain the world. And the way that it offers a special insight into the beauty of the game, I think, gives it a lot of worth. If you have any questions or noticed anything I missed, feel free to drop a comment below. I try to read them all. If you'd like to join a Discord that talks about the game or just to relax, my home Discord is also linked below. Um, but that's all I've got for today. This has been Christopher Beast, and I hope to see you all, well, next time.